So now we're going to create our input output tables, which are those X, Y tables. So basically, if you are given an equation like that, a function rule, you're going to create an X, Y table. So this, remember, is your inputs. Some people call it an input output table. I call it an X, Y, and this is our outputs. Sometimes you will be given the input, so there'll be a list of numbers here for X that you're going to plug in and then get Y. Sometimes you have to create them. If you have to create a lot of times, a good idea is to look at your positives and your negatives. So you can see what does it look like with negative numbers, what does it look like with zero, and what does it look like with positive. And again, I pick numbers that are easy to capitate. It's easy to add and multiply and subtract with twos and ones. So this means I'm going to plug negative 2 in for x. So I'm going to take 4 times negative 2 to get my output. So 4 times negative 2 is negative 8. So the output is negative 8, the answer. Okay, now that I plugged negative 2 in, now I'm going to do it, oh, I'm going to do the problem again, starting over, plugging negative 1 in for x this time. So 4 times negative 1 is negative 4. Now I'm going to do it again, plugging 0 in for x. I have a different input. 4 times 0 is 0. Now I'm going to do it with positive 1 and positive 2. And you don't necessarily need to write this. Some of us can do it in our head, but I'm writing it to show you what I'm doing. So 4 times 1 is 4. Now I plug 2 in. 4 times 2 is 8. So that is pretty simple. That's my input-output table of y equals 4x for these specific inputs. If I had different numbers to input for x, I would do the same process, just with different numbers. Um, so if I had a different equation, let's say I have y equals x divided by 2. And especially if I'm allowed to choose my inputs, I'm going to try everything I can to probably avoid fractions and decimals over here. So I don't have to pick one. I can pick whatever I want. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick numbers that I know are divisible by 2. So I'm going to stay away from odds, and I'm just going to pick even. So maybe I pick 0, 2, 4, 6, 8. Okay? So now I can plug in 0 divided by 2 is 0. Now I plug 2 in for x. 2 divided by 2 is 1. Now I plug 4 in. 4 divided by 2 is 2. Plug 6 in. 6 divided by 2 is 3. 8 divided by 2 is 4, and I am done. It is that simple to create an x and y chart. And again, when you get to pick your inputs, you can pick numbers so that you can avoid decimals and fractions on this side. Okay? Finally, if I have a story problem that maybe is, you know, Tommy has three shells and collects two per day. If I have to create an input output from this, well, first of all, I have to decide what my input is and then what my output is, okay? So my input is actually going to be number of days. So my x is how many days have passed, what's the time, and my output is going to be the number of shells that he has. So if zero days have passed, remember he starts with three shells. So he has three shells. So then a day has passed, he's going to get two more. So three plus two is five. Now two days has passed, he gets two more than that. Three days has passed, he gets two more than that, and I can create an input-output table. Um, from a story problem. And again, I want to think about my inputs. I'm not going to put negative numbers here because we're talking about days. I can't have a negative day pass. I don't want to talk about how many shells he gets in half a day. We're talking about how many shells he gets in a full day. So sometimes based on the story problem, you have to think about what your inputs are to match that.